It's a sad day for all you Cycle Frontier fans out there because on September 27th, 2023, they are going to be shutting down the servers for good. Now, there's some important information if you've been playing the game recently for the very select few I can only imagine that have been playing up until today. Well, all real money purchases are currently disabled as of June 28th, 2023, and there will be refunds, but only if you've made purchases after June 14th, 2023. So that's like two weeks ago. If you've made any purchases prior to that, you're not getting your money back. Now for the select few of you guys that were major fans of the cycle, but you never really got a lot of time to spend playing on it, they currently have accelerated leveling, free Fortuna passes, level skips and all that kind of stuff. So you can get to experience the game to, your, to the, their fullest, I guess, up until the end of their servers in September. Taking a look at the Steam charts, the numbers are actually not as bad as I thought, especially for a game that is canceling its early access phase so soon. As we can see, it had an all-time player peak of 40,000, and that's at the launch just a few years ago. And since then, every single time that there's been an actual wipe for the game, the peak players have been coming back. Last year, there was a peak player count of 25,000 after a fresh wipe, and then just last April, there was 10,000 player peak on a fresh wipe. And although it goes down to 5,000, 3,000, 2,000, and you're losing a lot of people, there's still like a significant amount of people that are still playing this game, especially for an early access shooter in a very niche genre. And just a comparison, back when I used to stream Daisy Standalone all the time, there was frequently 1,500 to 3,000 concurrent players logged in. That's it. And it just recently hit its all-time player peak like last year. Maybe there's something to be said about it being a free-to-play game, so it's not going to be generating nearly as much revenue. Maybe they were relying far too much on their battle pass and their premium skins and all that kind of stuff instead of actually selling a game. Not too sure exactly about the finances, but obviously for a free-to-play game, it's certainly not the numbers that you'd expect and what you need to maintain server fees. Now, I'm going into full-blown speculation mode here, but the only reason why I think the servers aren't going down right away is because they already have pre-existing legal obligations with server providers and contracts signed up until a certain point that they can't get out of. It really wouldn't make much sense to keep the game live for more than a few weeks after this announcement because of the nature of what the Cycle Frontier is. There's going to be virtually nobody playing it up until maybe the final day for a sad send-off because of the nature of the game. It is a deploy extraction multiplayer survival shooter that is dependent on the interactions with other players, either positive through VoIP interactions and working together, or of course in the PVP. There are missions that are structured around that. The entire game's intensity and feel is requiring other players in the world with the deployments, with the extractions. And I know you probably already know that, especially if you play the game, but there's some of you guys that are listening to this video that probably don't really know what the cycle is, so I just wanted to lay that foundation. So why has this happened? A game that has been in early access for only a few years that had a very good start with lots of positivity, especially with direct comparison to games like Escape from Tarkov, how did it fall apart so fast and why are we here now talking about the servers being shut down and a lot of people being surprised and then there's a lot of people on social media that are like, I called it, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah, well, back in season one, there was a lot of hype about this game because Tarkov, of course, was in a low point. There wasn't a wipe for a very long time and we've been waiting for a sci-fi style FPS shooter that can be very comparative to Tarkov, especially when it comes to the way the dealers work, the stash, the hideout. It was pretty much feature to feature a Tarkov copy other than the deployment and the artistic style and setting. And when a game is released in early access, a lot of people, including myself, give them benefit of the doubt for some issues that could be fixed over the course of six to 12 months. Or when the game is a little bit content light, but they promise seasonal updates that are going to introduce a huge amount of content to keep players interested for a long period of time. And a honeymoon phase is a very real thing, especially in multiplayer games these days where all the streamers are playing it, people are making YouTube videos about it, there's sponsorships, there's there's leagues, there's competitiveness, people are making guides and trying to understand the metas, the most efficient tactic available, the best PvP moments, the guns to use, not to mention the funny VoIP encounters and the fact that there was basically no queue time, you could just immediately deploy into the world. There was a lot going for this game at the very beginning. But sadly, like many other video games that have come before it, the honeymoon phase ends, 
the problems start presenting themselves. And of course, when you're free to play, the cheaters come out of the woodwork because it's a financial incentive for them to make scripts for popular FPS games, especially when there's very little risk to the script kitties that buy the scripts because of the low barrier of entry, it being free to play. Cheating being a really large issue combined with the honeymoon phase of the game, leaving and realizing that this is essentially an Escape for Tarkov reskin, but worse for a lot of people, and I know some people might disagree with me, but that's the general consensus. The cycle didn't necessarily bring enough new to the table to set itself apart for some of its competitors who are arguably further along in their early access phases or debatably better video games. There is also an issue with how the PvP systems were designed. I mean, it was practically impossible for extremely skilled players to defeat large group sizes simply due to the weapons and armor that they have available. In games like Hunt Showdown or Escape for Tarkov, the top tier players do not have this issue because their skill can outmatch the armor and the weaponry of their poorly skilled enemies. In the cycle frontier with the purple armor, the headshots not really being headshots, weapons that are just absolutely overtuned. This was a frustrating experience to many people who think that they're really good at these types of games and the amount of times that you're going to get killed in situations where you otherwise shouldn't simply due to weapon balance and armor balance, people are going to leave the game and go play something else. And this was a really big problem. So the developers decided to introduce an MMR bucket system, which basically took the gear value of what you had and the extraction loot value of your characters over previous games and tried to match you with people that are either similarly skilled or similarly geared spread over the amount of players that are in your group. That is a super light level version of it. I know I'm just, you know, summing it up and maybe even coming to a couple of conclusions here, but more or less, it was an MMR system that didn't necessarily work because the player base size was far too small. Even a game like Escape for Tarkov would struggle if there was an introduction of some level of skill-based matchmaking or MMR. These games are all about the unknown, not necessarily knowing what you're going to get yourself into. The moment that you introduce a system that starts dividing the player base, it's really going to kill a bit of the vibe. It didn't really solve the issue that they had with the weapon balancing and the body armor. It just separated the player base completely. Now in Season 2, they actually introduced a number of anti-cheat features that seemed to work quite well, which is really awesome. But for a lot of people, it was too little too late. And I think that was made more apparent when the older players would come back for a brand new season and see that there really wasn't enough new that was added to the game that really felt like the game was progressing in any meaningful way. Every time I would go back and play a brand new wipe for the cycle, it just kind of felt like I was doing the exact same thing over again. And I know you can make that exact same argument for Escape for Tarkov, and that's a whole other story, but we're talking about the cycle here, and I think that's a fair criticism. And imagine being a fan of the cycle frontier, like myself, that didn't actively play it all the time. I didn't play all the wipes, but I enjoyed the experience for a couple of weeks every time I did. I liked the developers. I was on podcasts with them. I was DMing them on Discord, having conversations with them. Hell, they've even sponsored a couple videos here on this channel back in the day. I liked the game. I actually was probably one of the few people that enjoyed the PvP. I keep telling people on my stream that they don't believe me, but I did. I actually had a lot of fun playing and streaming their game, but I wasn't committed enough because it was too early access. So I would always come back and take a look at the game time after time to see what was new and how the, the game was progressing with fresh wipes. Because people who play games like Escape for Tarkov, like the Cycle Frontier, they take breaks, they come back with a fresh wipe where everybody is starting at an equal playing field for the most part, and it's fun. You're competing with other people. There's this like awesome fear of missing out. People are trying to level up, unlock the med stims first, get new access to weapons and stuff. It's just a lot of fun. But then the devs decided to stop doing that, which completely eliminated the reason for a lot of people like myself to want to ever come back to the game. And that's kind of it. I think when they made that announcement, a lot of people like myself just decided to just not ever come back to the cycle because there really wasn't a reason to because I know how the gear balancing works in this game. 
a lot of the players, regardless of the bucket system, regardless of the MMR system, would just have a significant advantage over the regular player. And that just wasn't fun. And even if they found a way to parse those players out of the experience, it would dilute the servers themselves because the game is trying to put everybody into their different quote unquote buckets. And that's not cool either. And that is the moment when I realized the cycle frontier was a dead game. Whenever they made that announcement, I kind of said it on my stream. I'm not trying to say I told you so, but it made me sad because I'm not one of those people that wants to root for these games to fail. I liked the developers. I thought they were doing a good thing with this game. I think it just needed time. And I don't think the player base and the numbers of concurrent players was necessarily a bad thing given the genre that they're in and how new their game actually was. So I'm actually a little upset. I'm, I, I, think, I think they pulled the plug too early. I mean, I don't understand the finances. Maybe it is a free-to-play game. Maybe you need 10,000 to 20,000 concurrent players to keep those games alive to actually pay for the server fees. I, I, I don't know. But one thing I will say is maybe the cycle should have spent less time copying all the other games in the category and spent more time trying to develop unique features and ideas for themselves to set them apart from their competitors. And maybe, maybe they should have realized that, hey, these wipes are awesome. They bring back thousands and thousands and thousands of players. It rekindles the flame. It gives us hope. Maybe we should really focus on delivering a lot of content for these wipes. Get people excited. Not mediocre, marginal changes to the game. And maybe a map every now and again, but with the same enemies just reskinned. Right, And then also for all the people that have been spending money for the last couple of months still believing in the game, they don't get a refund. I think you should be refunded for the last couple of months if you stuck with the Cycle Frontier and bought a bunch of skins. Not the last two weeks. That seems pretty weak. So as much as I enjoyed playing the game, as much as I supported the development in the early stage... I'm very disappointed with how they decided to end this project and how they decided to manage their seasonal updates and the general lack of content and innovation for themselves. I'm disappointed in them and it sucks. And that is the story of the Cycle Frontier.